Well, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Um, we're just super excited here to uh, be able to roll out our verified responder portion of uh, our Pulse Point application. And, uh, you know, we're just, uh, first we want to really thank Avera Heart Hospital for uh, their community partnership in getting this uh, Pulse Point application started uh, almost five years ago now. Um, through their assistance, we were able to, uh, to launch this program. And today we have over 18,000 downloads of the program and over 10,000 of those have the CPR uh, notification checked for them to be able to respond and, and help out in a cardiac arrest incident. So, you know, we know uh, our cardiac arrest save rates in this community are some of the best in the country, um, well above the national average. But in, in our EMS system, we're always trying to improve and always trying to look for something new and, and uh, improve, and that's exactly what this program does, Pulse Point and Verified Responder. And uh, <clears throat> we also know that our cardiac arrest, you know, survival rates, um, how people survive cardiac arrest, uh, has to do with time, it, and, and that matters. So the sooner we can get uh, CPR, and the sooner we can get uh, defibrillation um, on these patients, uh, the higher survivability rate that they have. So I guess uh, first I'm going to introduce uh, Division Chief Jeff Helm. It's through his leadership and, and his vision and, and his idea to start Pulse Point and start this program here almost five years ago, and now again through his vision to get uh, this verified responder portion of that going. Um, so thank you, Jeff, for that, and, and welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Like he said, um, we started over four years ago bringing Pulse Point to engage our community in sudden cardiac arrest survivability. This is an extension of that. There was always kind of a gap between uh, public locations and private locations when it comes to cardiac arrest. And in most, uh, the percentage is roughly 80 or better that are outside of public locations that a cardiac arrest can occur, it seems like. So most of those are in private locations. Pulse Point does a great job in the public locations. As you can see, the numbers that we have that uh, allow um, our public combines citizens that are willing to do CPR in public places. Now this is a combination of that plus our verified responders, which are our men and women that we partnered with, with the local 814 that are willing to do things that they do every day, but now they're willing to do that outside of their duty days, where they live in their communities. So verified responder encompasses that gap that we saw between public and private locations. So we're really looking forward to the impact that will make. And with the AEDs that we've partnered with Phillips, who has been gracious enough to grant those to our uh, verified responders, we envision this impact to be huge when it comes down to survivability and sudden cardiac arrest, not only in public locations, but now in private locations as well. The technology they use is basically the same as we've talked about with the Pulse Point Respond, which is the, the public side of it. Now it just engages those responders that have been trained and that are part of our department, a little connection in the technology that says now these people are verified and when there is an event at a public or a private location, excuse me, they will be notified if they're within walking distance of that. So there's where that technology comes in play for those things. And uh, the partnership we had to have in order for this to work with the local 814 is huge because they had to make a commitment that they say, not only when we get off at eight o'clock in the morning, we're willing to continue our service to our communities beyond that. And so with that support, we're very proud of our men and women that they're willing to do that. And I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Luther, medical director, to kind of speak about uh, his, his thoughts on the program. Thank you, Doc. <clears throat> well, thank you, everybody. Um, again, I thank you, Chief and Jeff, and um, I'm very excited to be part of this, this system. I've been involved in the system for quite some time in various capacities. Um, this is already a high-performing EMS system. Uh, I think the collaboration in our tiered system is impressive uh, with the players and uh, users of the system. Um, this is an opportunity that's monumentous. This is the only second city, I think, as Jeff will probably talk more about, uh, in the country to utilize this. Um, and to echo the Chief's and Jeff's comments, um, our survival of cardiac arrest in this community is, is, is phenomenal. It's very high, uh, much higher than the national standards. Not only do you survive the cardiac arrest, but you survive it neurologically intact. So you leave the hospital, uh, you're with all your faculties and, and basically at a baseline. Um, this system is going to add another dimension to, again, this already high-performing EMS system. Um, we'll be able to deploy these defibrillators out timely where most of these cardiac arrests occur. And along with the pulse system, uh, we will have citizenry and as well as trained individuals out there getting these 
AEDs where they need to be. So I'm, I'm very glad to be part of this, excited, and again, I think the whole community can um, be proud of this uh, endeavor. Thank you. Like Doctor said, yeah, we are the second pilot community in the United States to do this, so that's a big deal. They're looking to us in the, the original city and some of those other pilot cities that will be coming on later in the year for information to see how this will work in other communities all across the country. So I think that's a big piece of this study. They'll be collecting data from our men and women uh, as they respond in the community for uh, the private locations and using that information to not only expand this program but other such programs to, to see what impact you can make engaging the community both in the private and public side of the, the, the thing. And as you can see to my left here, there's a, a map, a, just a snapshot of kind of what the verified responder looks like and the public responder looks like. As you can see, the yellow are all those public ones, like the chief talked about, over 10,000 of them have signed up and have checked the CPR. They're willing to help out in a CPR needed at a public location. That's all the yellow. The red are a snapshot of the verified responders. Those are those men and women that are specially trained and, and, and can go into private locations. And part of that is we trust them every day on their jobs to be able to go into those locations. And as, they, as an extension of that off-duty, we trust them to, to make an impact in private locations. So that's kind of a snapshot of that. It works in the background of the CAD, the dispatch system. So when a cardiac arrest is, is, is alerted to our first responders in the ambulance service and the police department and all those, it is sent to a verified responder in a private location if they're within walking distance, about a quarter mile at this point. Uh, so that way they can make an impact before first responders are at the same time as first responders. So they're notified no sooner, but at the same time. So they have a better impact or better chance of making an impact, especially with the, being partnered with AEDs right at the scene. And that works the same way with the public locations as well for those that are verified and those that aren't verified necessarily. So yes, it works with the technology on their phones, smartphone app, and that's, I appreciate you bringing that up. I would encourage people to not only learn hands-only CPR, but download the Pulse Point app so they can further engage the community because there's other side benefits. You'll kind of know what's going on with your fire departments. You can, if you hear a fire truck go by, pull up the app and kind of tell you what they're doing. It might be a structure fire, traffic collision, whatnot, but like I said, time is of, of the essence when it comes to sudden cardiac events. So if you say your neighbor just a block down is having a heart attack or a, a cardiac event and you didn't know anything about it, but you, most people would want to help if they could. And this engages them to be able to do that because they're going to be in within three minutes quicker than we can. We have great response time. Don't get me wrong, our EMS system is outstanding. The way we have it tiered, we get to these scenarios very quickly. But if you can shave off any amount of time, the impact and outcomes are going to improve. Okay.